Aside from breaking down muscle tissue and burning fat, exercising causes a whole bunch of changes to happen inside your body. These changes will affect your heart, your lungs, your brain, your hormones, and most of the cells found within your body. So today I want to go over exactly what happens during exercise step by step. And one of the first things that your body needs for any exercise or movement in general is energy. So when you work out, your body, and especially your muscle cells, will increase their demand for adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. ATP is actually the only form of energy that your cells can use. And at any given time, your body will only have a small amount of ATP sitting in storage. This means that more of it needs to be created to be able to continuously output energy. So after you quickly exhaust a small amount of ATP stored within your cells, one of the ways that more ATP is created as you continue to work out is through a process known as glycolysis. This process is what helps turn glucose into ATP. Now glucose is a type of sugar found within the body, and it comes primarily from the foods that you eat. Most of this glucose is stored within your muscles and your liver, so this way it can be broken down quickly to supply your cells with ATP fast. But this isn't the only energy pathway that your body can use to generate more ATP. At the same time that your body tries to get energy quickly from breaking down glucose, it'll also increase its demand for more oxygen because that allows you to create even more ATP. This is why exercise makes your heart rate and your breathing rate go up. As your heart rate increases, more blood will be pumped to your muscles to deliver that additional oxygen where it's needed most. In fact, your body can need up to 15 times more oxygen when you're exercising. And that's exactly why you'll start to breathe faster and heavier when you work out. This will of course depend on the type of exercise you're doing as well. During regular weightlifting, your body will obviously need more oxygen than you would need during rest. But compared to cardiovascular training, cardio will typically increase your body's demand for oxygen much more, causing you to breathe faster and heavier when running or cycling rather than when lifting weights. As you push yourself and your body tries to generate more energy, there comes a point where your body can't bring in and take up more oxygen. Once you've hit that point, it means that you've reached the maximum oxygen capacity for your body, also known as the VO2 max. You can actually improve your VO2 max through cardiovascular training. The higher your VO2 max is, the fitter you'll tend to be, and the better you'll be able to perform various forms of exercise, especially cardiovascular exercise. Not only does having a higher VO2 max help you use more oxygen for energy, but it also decreases the amount of time it takes you to catch your breath after stopping. So if you have a higher VO2 max, you can take fewer and shorter breaks without losing your wind. On the other hand, having a low maximum oxygen capacity won't only make you breathe heavier, but it's also more likely to lead to spasms and to cause that dreaded side stitch, which will further limit your performance. You're more likely to get a side stitch with a low VO2 max because when you breathe really heavy, your diaphragm, which is a major muscle that's responsible for respiration, it can become fatigued cramping up your midsection. Now, as your heart beats harder, it helps you circulate more oxygen throughout your body at a faster rate. This not only provides your muscles with the oxygen they need to keep functioning properly, but this extra blood flow that's being pumped to the muscles assists with eliminating waste products from those same muscle tissues that are receiving that oxygen. This is an ongoing process since these metabolic byproducts continuously build up in your muscles as you exercise. Examples include lactate, phosphate, and hydrogen ions. These byproducts reduce the capacity of your muscles to continue to contract and perform at peak levels. That's why this increase in blood flow is beneficial because it helps to remove these metabolic byproducts. Getting rid of these is great because that metabolic waste is also what gives you that burning feeling that becomes especially apparent when performing high amounts of reps. For the longest time, trainers, scientists, and almost everyone in the fitness industry believed that this burning sensation was directly caused by lactate. But lactate is actually not what makes you feel fatigue. So when your body uses glycolysis to generate ATP for energy, a byproduct that's left over is lactic acid. That lactic acid quickly separates into a hydrogen ion and lactate within the muscle. And the burning sensation that you experience is actually caused by hydrogen ions, not the lactate. Hydrogen ions do that by making the surrounding environment more acidic. In either case, having a stronger cardiovascular system and a more efficient VO2 max can help clear out the waste that causes that burning sensation. 
Now, more blood flowing to the muscles doesn't just happen without any trade-offs. One consequence of this increase to blood flow to muscle tissue is that it pulls some blood away from other systems and functions within the body. And those functions get pushed down the priority ladder, so to speak, when you're exercising. An example of one of these functions is digestion. So the digestive process will become impaired during exercise. That's why it's best not to consume a heavy meal directly before your workout. If you do, it'll likely just sit there in your stomach causing discomfort, gas, indigestion, and bloating. Now, even though digestion slows down, other organs aside from our heart, muscles, and lungs will also benefit from the increase in blood flow. One of those major organs is your brain, which has been shown to experience increases in blood flow during exercise. This is beneficial for a number of reasons outside the gym, but even while you're working out, this additional blood flow will make you feel more alert and focused, which helps your brain cells literally function at a higher level. Specifically, there are three areas in the brain that experience an increase in blood flow during exercise. These include the hippocampus, the hypothalamus, and the pituitary gland. The hippocampus is the part of the brain that's crucial for learning and memory. It's also one of the only sections of the brain that can make new brain cells. The increase in blood flow leads to more oxygen being delivered to the brain, which helps facilitate this process of neurogenesis or the creation of new neurons in the brain. The best part is that even if you were to completely stop exercising, those new brain cells that you create will survive. This is typically not the case for many other changes that happen to the brain in response to exercise. Most of those changes will quickly fade away not too long after you become less active. The other part of the brain that's impacted is the hypothalamus, which is responsible for a number of bodily functions, including body temperature regulation and the regulation of water balance in the body. So obviously when you exercise, your body will heat up. It's your hypothalamus that then informs your skin to secrete sweat and to release it through your sweat glands to keep you cool. And the third part of your brain that's impacted, the pituitary gland, happens to be the control center of your brain. It informs the adrenal glands to pump out cortisol and adrenaline, which make your heart beat faster and your lungs breathe more efficiently. The pituitary gland also increases your blood pressure, makes you more alert, helps your body mobilize its energy stores into fuel. It also raises blood sugar levels in the blood to give you fast acting energy, and it informs your body to secrete growth hormones. Research shows that high intensity interval training specifically is really effective at increasing growth hormone, but all forms of exercise are beneficial for your growth hormone. Now, when most people hear growth hormone, they think that it's beneficial from a muscle building standpoint, but that's usually not the case. A study from McMaster University found that growth hormone is not anabolic in muscle tissue. It's only anabolic in the surrounding connective tissues like your tendons and bones. It also can help delay muscle breakdown, so it can be beneficial from a muscle maintenance perspective, but not so much for growth. Instead, it seems that the primary role of growth hormone during exercise is to help mobilize fat from fat cells so that the fat can be burnt off for energy. Aside from hormones, exercising also triggers the release of various chemical messengers in the brain known as neurotransmitters. This includes endorphins, which are your body's natural painkillers. The release of these endorphins can lead to the phenomenon known as the runner's high, which is a short-lasting euphoric state following intense exercise. But endorphins aren't the only neurotransmitters that get released. Dopamine, which also plays a significant role in how we feel pleasure, also gets elevated, as well as gamma aminobutyric acid, also known as GABA. GABA is a neurotransmitter that has tranquilizing and anti-anxiety effects. You'll likely also feel better due to a bump up in serotonin, a neurotransmitter known for its role in mood and depression. Another thing that'll happen as you're exercising, especially if you're lifting weights or engaging in some other form of resistance training, is tiny tears in your muscle cells will start to develop. We call this process muscle damage, and it's what gives your muscles that sore feeling after your workout. This muscle damage is especially magnified for beginner lifters, and it's also magnified when you perform exercises with your muscles in a stretch position. An example is the Romanian deadlift. If you've done Romanian deadlifts before, you've probably experienced severe muscle soreness the day after your workout. That's because the exercise trains your hamstrings in a stretch position. And exercises that do that typically lead to more muscle damage and more delayed onset muscle soreness the following day. This leads many people to believe that muscle damage is crucial for muscle growth. The belief is that when you create muscle damage, your body will repair it and then add additional muscle fibers on top of it to prepare for a similar training stimulus the next time, leading to muscle growth. 
However, nowadays, scientists are more skeptical about whether muscle damage actually improves muscle growth. Currently, research indicates that muscle damage isn't required for muscle growth and it doesn't even correlate with muscle growth. In fact, excessive amounts of muscle damage might even impair muscle growth as indicated by a 2019 paper published in the Journal of Applied Physiology. So the goal shouldn't be to damage your muscles as much as possible or to get as sore as possible because that's simply not how your body responds. Finally, one last thing that'll happen inside your body when you exercise that I briefly touched on earlier is that you'll start to sweat more, especially if it's hot. Your body will release sweat to help you cool down and it's a pretty straightforward process. The hypothalamus will signal two types of sweat glands, the eccrine glands and the apocrine glands. Eccrine glands are found on the surface of your entire body and they produce an odorless perspiration that's made up of a mixture of water, salt, and small amounts of other electrolytes. And that's released directly onto the skin's surface. When this sweat evaporates into the air through the process of convection, your body temperature naturally drops. The apocrine glands, on the other hand, are primarily found in hair covered areas like the scalp, armpits, and groin. These sweat glands produce a fattier sweat that can result in an odor when bacteria on the skin begin to break it down. So that's essentially a deep dive into what happens inside your body when you exercise. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon. Also, I know it's really interesting learning how things work, but without changing your exercise habits and your diet for the better, you won't improve your body composition. So if you'd like to skip all the trial and failure that most people go through, then visit my website and start my free six week shred program now. Now, when you go to the page, you'll see that there is a deposit required. That deposit is given back to you at the end of the program to encourage you to actually do your part the whole way through, which after 14 years of training clients, I've realized that the most important thing is for the client to stay consistent and accountable. By giving you back your deposit at the end and requiring you to simply just show up and try throughout the six weeks, you'll not only get a free program, but you'll also get incredible results in the process. Unfortunately, most free programs don't produce the kind of results that we do because they go straight to the trash if they're ever even opened. That would be a complete waste with our six week shred because it's over $500 of value. You get a complete workout plan, a full video exercise library, a recipe book, a customizable diet plan based on your preferences, and a coach that'll be there to guide you through the entire process. The deposit simply motivates you to actually follow the plan. And based on our experience with over 20,000 people, that's what actually leads to incredible results. Our only secret hope is that after you get these incredible results, you decide to continue working with us after the six week trial, but it's totally up to you. At the end of the six weeks, you have no obligation to stay. You can take your deposit and your results and go train however you want. So if you'd like to find out more, you can click the link below in the description, or you could visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com.